All right, so I'm going to talk about a measurement that um, we run at Probe Lab. So I'm Guy, um, I'm working uh, with Protocol Labs on the Probe Lab team with Yanis, um, among others. And we run um, mostly measurement and protocol optimization um, all around LP2P, IPFS, and also Filecoin. And that's a measurement that we've run this year in December. And we wanted to um, get some more data around BitSwap. So for those who aren't familiar with BitSwap, BitSwap is mostly a data transfer protocol uh, that is used by IPFS to just transfer data from one uh, computer to another. But it's also doing some content routing. I'm not sure if it was meant to be uh, from the start, but that's what we're going to evaluate today, not the data transfer, but rather um, the content discovery, content routing. So the um, motivation that led us to, to do this is um, the way BitSwap works is there is a static provider search delay, which is a magic parameter that has been set to one second, which means that BitSwap will wait for one second before making um, a DHT query in order to find a content. And we wanted to know whether this value of one second was right or if we should maybe increase it or decrease it or get rid of it at all in order to optimize um, content routing efficiency. So just a few words about how um, content discovery works in BitSwap. So first, um, yeah, let, let's take the, the Kubo example. When you want to um, look up for a CID in Kubo, Kubo is going to call um, GoBitSwap and it's going to say, hey, I want to have this CID. And what GoBitSwap is going to do is for one second, it's going to broadcast, uh, hey, I want this CID to all of its directly connected peers. And if within one second, none of them say, hey, I got the file, here, here you go. Um, it, will, um, it will say, hey, DHT, I need some help. Can you look this CID up for me and tell me who is storing it? But the DHT work doesn't happen if um, the BitSwap broadcast is successful in the first place. So what we did in order to measure it um, and to get data around this is we got a huge list of CIDs that we got by just sniffing the, the BitSwap traffic. So just listening to all of the requests saying, hey, I want this file, I want this file, I want this file. Um, and we gave BitSwap not just one second, but 15 seconds to find and retrieve a block. And we made sure that BitSwap didn't call the DHT, which means that Kubo is going to tell BitSwap, hey, can you find this CID for me? And now BitSwap is on its own, has 15 seconds, and it's either you get it or you don't get it. And in the cases where BitSwap wasn't able to find a content, we still wanted to make sure that the content exists and is reachable somewhere. So we just make a DHT query, and if the DHT query succeeds, it means that BitSwap failed to retrieve the content. And if the DHT query doesn't find anything, it means that the content isn't unreachable, and so it's not a BitSwap problem. Uh, we also prevented um, recursive content resolution, which means that for CIDs, um, if you request a root CID in Kubo, um, it's going to retrieve all of the um, content that is included inside this block. And so we didn't want that. We wanted to retrieve a single block only. And this experiment has been run uh, in December last year from um, Google Pl Cloud VM in Central Europe, which is relevant for um, the latencies. I mean, it's relevant to know this information uh, when we get to latencies. Now, uh, some, some numbers, some statistics. So we discovered that uh, more than 98% uh, of um, discoveries were successful, which means that uh, BitSwap is great at discovering content. However, for each request, BitSwap has to solicitate more than 800 peers. That's really a lot. 
so it means that when you're looking for content, you literally just broadcast, hey, I want this. And sure, it, it will work, but at what price? And uh, so yeah, that's a lot of messages to, to be sent. And also, we got uh, some statistics uh, about the content providers. And what we've seen is, um, for instance, the top 20 um, providers are serving 75% of the CIDs that are, let's say, requested a lot. So it's not you list all of the CIDs that exist in the IPFS network and just see who's providing them. Um, now it's the CIDs that are actually accessed um, so during the, the measurement period. So it means that only a few providers are providing a lot of content. So on the huge list of CID we got, we only had uh, a bit more than 700 uh, content providers, which is not a lot, um, given that, for instance, the public DHT has around 20,000 um, participants. And what we also observed is that NFT does storage. So that's uh, on the left and si uh, right hand side. Um, the top 10 peer IDs that were uh, serving blocks. And most of the requests were towards probably NFTs uh, provided by NFT.storage. But we couldn't find um, all of the operators of the um, top 10 peer IDs. So now to the latencies. So that's only for uh, successful um, bit swap discoveries. And we can see that the majority of the requests will succeed within one second, if it is successful at all. However, we can see that some of the requests will succeed up to 15 seconds, because that was the, the, the given time. So it means that sometimes you're requesting for some content, and BitSwap will eventually get it after some seconds. But in most of the cases, you get it under a second. And now, if we zoom it um, a little, we can see that even most of the content, like almost 80%, is obtained within a 200 millisecond, which is very fast. And so to get the, the content within two, 200 milliseconds, it's two RTTs, which means that a node that is going to be located close to you is going to be directly connected to you first and uh, provide you this file. So we run the measurement from Europe. It means that content was available somewhere in Europe, probably, uh, so that we could get it this fast. Um, now, um, since the measurement, the, there have been some recent developments around this bit swap in, in general. And uh, there, there's been an upgrade on the connection manager, limiting the um, inbound connection to uh, a bit less than 100, which means that now um, bit swap isn't connected anymore to like 800, 900 peers. And so the broadcast is less efficient. So it's good because it's less spammy. You're going to spam uh, less peers in order to find your content. But um, it's also going to be less successful, probably. So we don't have numbers since this happened. Um, we've also tried to um, just get rid of the uh, provider search delay. So set it to zero second, which means that at the moment Kubo um, wants to look up for a CID, it's going to uh, in parallel uh, query the THT and uh, do a bit swap broadcast. But unfortunately, probably due some, to some side effects or bugs in the way sessions are handled in uh, bit swap, um, this didn't turn out to, be a, to, to give a better TFB. So the performance uh, to get the, the time to first byte was actually worse when we reduced the delay, which from a protocol perspective, doesn't make sense. But yeah, it happens. And yeah. So now the takeaway that we have is that BitSwap is a fast and accurate way to discover content. It's true. But it's just very inefficient. You're going to need to pay a lot and generate a lot of traffic um, in the network in order to, to find the content, which is probably not um, what we want. And also, bit, um, bit swap as a content discovery mechanism doesn't scale, because in order to keep the same, let's say, um, success rate when you discover content, um, 
you need to be connected to the same ratio of the peers, which means that if the network scales, but I don't know, we got 10x peers in the networks, which is like 10x providers as well, then you will need to be connected to 10x more peers in order to get the same um, success rate. And it's linear, it just doesn't scale. And also what we observed is that, which was quite surprising for us, is that the top 20 peers, the, the top 20 providers were actually serving like 75% of the, the, the requests on BitSwap, which is surprising. But it also means that if you are to broadcast request, you could just broadcast your request to these 20 um, top peers and you will have a 75% rate, 75% uh, success rate, which isn't that bad and it's not so noisy. And so then it brings us to the question, do we really want to bundle data transfer and content routing together in the same, let's say, component bit swap? Or should we have like a distinct, uh, a distinct data transfer so bit swap could still do bit swap stuff, but just not broadcast and we could use more efficient um, content router uh, such as the DHT or IPNI or any other content routers that are a bit smart and don't just broadcast, hey, can you give me this to, to all of the peers? So um, yeah, that was mostly it. So there's a full report um, on the um, a GitHub repository network measurement that you can scan the, the QR code to get to. Um, and it contains uh, additional data, uh, more plots, and also some uh, improvement recommendation. And yep, that, that was it for me. I'm happy to take any question you may have. You might have answered this before, and I might have missed it. Where, where were those um, those metrics, that, like of the uh, availability of the uh, CIDs? Where did those come from? Like, how did you collect them? The availabilities of CID. Yeah, uh, you like mean that seventy-five percent number that you're using? Like, um, were you making those requests yourself, or are these based on like gateway traffic? Or? No, it's um, traffic that we sniff from BitSwap. So it's. Um, oh, I see. Just so you just have a passive node request. and it's just getting, yeah. okay. And we made sure that each uh, CID, we, I mean, we if we were requesting, we requested twice the same CID, we didn't uh, replicate twice the traffic, so we made each CID unique. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Lockie. I'm just curious what, it's probably in that link at the end, but what are your, what are your suggested next steps? Um, I'd say if we can get uh, BitSwap, like fix BitSwap to make sure that we can have a provider search delay at zero so that we can start the DHT work at the same time, then we would see the performance of the DHT compared with BitSwap and then gradually we can walk away from this general broadcast and make uh, BitSwap and Kubo much less spammy. So I think, yeah, the DHT is a much more, or IPNI are much more efficient content routing mechanism, and we should um, go towards this and gradually turn off the, the bits of broadcast. Thank you. Um, I, I have a question while we wait for others, uh, perhaps. So uh, it's interesting that 200 milliseconds um, graph that we've seen in the past, it just occurred to me that maybe w what we should have done is run some of these experiments from a remote location to see if that would go to 400 milliseconds or something. Uh, because, yeah, as you said, we were running this experiment from within the EU, and then if content is also within the EU, then we have that 200 there, but maybe it's not the case for all of the world. So, um, yeah, it would have been interesting maybe something to think about. Yeah, but as a lot of content is NFTs, coming from NFT or storage, I guess NFT or storage has multiple replicas of all the data all around the world. So I, I expect maybe the performance in North America to be similar. Yeah. 
that maybe yeah accessing from a remote place would just shift the that, graph yeah. to the right i think yeah yeah okay Just in a c storage that 75% of the nodes that are quick to respond um so we didn't look into all details and so maybe so that's um so the NFT storage node, we're sure that it's NFT storage node. And the ones that don't have a label could be NFT storage or other providers. So that's a lower bound of the NFT storage traffic. And yeah, so for, for instance, for the 75% is the top 20 providers. Here you can see the top 10 and we have six, at least six NFT storage. So that's an estimate. Okay then, um, let's thank uh, Guillaume again and um, 